Hey everybody, welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. Today I got to follow up on a few things we didn't cover, and that was to make sure our enemies are gliding across the screen, and also take a look at how to do a game over screen uh, to end the game. So let's uh, get that figured out now. Okay, so one thing is, like I told you before, sometimes the enemy doesn't necessarily bounce off the walls like this. Uh, sometimes I I don't know what it is, but it just happens sometimes when I'm changing these values. But uh, to have them glide across the screen, it's actually f fairly simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to enemy 4 and let's see here gonna get an event. I'm gonna go to when clicked. I'm gonna use a forever loop because this has to happen forever. It has to be monitoring it or it has to be doing this forever. I want the um, excuse me, the enemy to glide and I want random values here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my operators. I want it to glide to a random X value or a random Y value. In this case, it's those values that I have listed already, negative 240, 240, and um, I'm going to use negative 180 to 180. I'm going to put that into a forever loop and click here. So this is another way for you to have the enemy uh, effectively bounce back and forth. Now. I need to change this line of code here. Instead of it going to this location, per se, it's going to go to this location. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to attach that code there. Let's see what that does. So I'm going to hide enemy 1. I'm going to hide enemy 2. I'm going to hide enemy 3. And so now we're just looking at enemy 4. That's the one we've just added. And as you can see, the enemy is kind of randomly going in different locations. Let's see if the enemy actually responds. Yes, it does. And whoa, as you can see, it's got some crazy actions going on here. It's kind of just spawning in different locations. Okay, so um, I took a quick pause there to try and figure out what happened with my code, but I, I realize now that I don't need this actual bit of code down here which restarts a loop. What I do need to do, what I do need to do here is actually get rid of this code so what's great about Scratch is that you can evaluate whether something's working or not working. So we're going to review the code here for enemy 4. So when we first start the game, when we click, we want the actual enemy to spawn or show. Switch to costume enemy 1 and go to a random location along the X or Y axis. Afterwards, we want the object to... Um, I've left this option here for it to move 10 steps or if on edge bounce. Actually, we don't even need this anymore because we you're we are using this code here called what is code here? Yeah, I guess is block code code to glide for a second to different locations in the screen. Then we have our sensing and our animation with this block of code. Now, after it's been hit by the beam, I send a broadcast message, and this message will say that um, the I will switch back to costume 1. I will respawn in a different location. I'll wait 3 seconds and then I'll show up. Initially I thought I needed this script here but apparently I don't because it's already running. If you can see this here, this forever loop means it's still running. It's just that you can't see it moving on the screen so this extra bit of code is not necessary. So there you go. I think uh, I'm going to hide the other enemies for now. 
then let's test this out. Hide enemy one, hide enemy two, hide enemy three, and here's our opponent. Very difficult to catch. There you go. And it's destroyed. It should respawn in three seconds, and there it goes. All right, so that is how you apply uh, that movement with your character. Okay, now how do I design a game over screen? So I'm going to respawn all my other um, characters. So you're going to want to apply this. If you're not able to get your characters to bounce left and right, your enemies, you're going to need to use this forever loop that allows you to cause your, your enemy to glide across the screen. So we need to get to our game over screen. To do that, we're going to click on a rocket ship. And with our rocket ship, we're going to apply another event to create in this system. So what I need to do is cause a condition, an if statement. Now if, right, if, and this, is, this isn't perfect, I'm still trying to work out the details, but if the HP or the hit points, so if something is equal to something, then I want the, the rocket ship to change costumes, I want it to explode. So I need to get my data point, my variable, and I'm going to input a value by clicking in here by stating zero. If my HP hits zero, I am going to change my look. I'm going to switch to costume zero, uh, number two. Then I'm going to get a control option. I'm going to wait 0.2 seconds. I'm going to get another look. And then I'm going to switch to costume rocket ship three. I'm going to duplicate that. Whoop. I don't need this line down here. I'm going to hide after that third one. And I'm going to wait another 0.2 seconds. And I'm going to broadcast a message now. So I'm going to go to event and I'm going to broadcast a message. And it's going to be player dead to state that the player has been destroyed. So there is my if statement. Remember, we need this to constantly be active. So we have to put a forever loop per, or put this if statement in a forever loop to always be constantly checking and, and snap it into place. Okay, why did we use a broadcast code? Well, what we're going to do next is we're going to go to our stage here. We're going to go to backdrops, game over screen, go to scripts. I'm going to go to my events. And I'm going to go to when I receive player dead, the look is I'm going to switch to this backdrop called space or game over. Okay. In addition to that, I'm going to see about just stopping the entire game afterwards, meaning I have to press the green flag to start the entire game over. Okay. So let's press the green flag. If we press the green flag, we should see the opening screen. And the game should start. I'm already losing HP. These monsters are difficult and I've been destroyed. I go to my game over screen and um, technically I can still fire but you get the idea. The game is over and once we're done with that we can restart the game and we can already see we have a problem and that problem is our costume didn't change back. Okay so that's great. That's a good thing. That makes us... Well, I'll show you how to fix that right now. I'm going to click on my rocket ship. I'm going to go to my script. Now, to fix this, when I press something up here, right here, if you see here, the very first code, I need to set my look. I need to switch to... I need to go to show, which I do have, but I need to put costume rocket ship. Just a regular rocket ship. Okay, so let's see if that works. Let's take a few more hits here. And I'm destroyed. Game over. Press the green flag. I'm back up and running. 
and the game starts all over again. Okay, so there you go. In this tutorial, we looked at, uh, actually, I don't even recall, but gliding. We looked at gliding, moving from screen, uh, moving throughout the screen, and we set up a game over screen for um, for us. So, in our final look at the tutorial, we're gonna maybe it's our final one. We're gonna take a look at adding sound effects to the actual game.